Good evening. Good to see everyone with us today. Uh, busy, made it. So that's the main thing. Because uh, tonight I think you will find uh, this part of Revelation very interesting. And, you know, as if you watched last night, we went in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 10 or uh, verse 9, excuse me. And uh, we find, you know, what God said, how it's going to be, uh, no more sorrows, no more heartaches, no more sickness, no more anything to, to cause trouble. And tonight we're going to get a description of the New Jerusalem that is actually the way John saw it was he seen the new heaven, which would be like our solar system, and a new earth. And then he saw the new Jerusalem coming down and setting down on the earth. And uh, so very interesting on that. And uh, let's, let's start with verse 10. So if you've got your Bible, Revelation chapter 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now, when you get a picture of how big the new Jerusalem is, you're going to have, you're, you're wondering how, what type of mountain was John on when he saw this massive cubicle that is coming down out of heaven to earth. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, it, it's coming separately. And so as we give that, This Jerusalem that's coming is nothing like the old Jerusalem or the Jerusalem of today. I mean, it's not a, they can't even compare to what this new Jerusalem's going to be about. And John, God gives John around 25 verses to describe this new Jerusalem that uh, will be basically will be the main headquarters and everything. And uh, I don't know, I remember it's been a few years back. Uh, I may have talked about last night uh, seeing some of the, they showed some of the palaces that the sheep, oil sheiks of Middle East owned and how huge they're, uh, just like their bathrooms uh, were laid with gold, and um, some of them had like seven to 10,000 square feet, which is a massive, or is a, would be a, like a mansion compared to us. Uh, you know, uh, you take an average house is probably going to be, around here would be 1,500 to uh, 3,000 square feet, and that's not even the size of their bathroom over there. And so we're going, like I said, we're going to get a description. In verse 11, having the glory of God, in other words, the Shekinah glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal and uh, we're going to look at some of these things that uh, is being said and you see it's just like the Shekinah glory of, uh, that has been seen by some people it is so uh, bright that you can't hardly look straight at it uh, it's just God's glory it's just so pure and so bright and that's the way 
of the New Jerusalem is going to be. And, uh, you know, there won't be no need for a sun or moon. We won't have a, 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 a greater light for the day and a lesser light for the night to live by. And, uh, you know, uh, like, in, like most precious stones, say like diamonds, uh, you look at them, but you hold them up to the light, and if they're a true diamond, the colors that it gives off and everything. And uh, it, it's to think that we're going to live in a place that is made out of these stones and jewels and everything. Nothing here on earth never has nor ever will be anywhere close to comparing what awaits us when we get to our heavenly home, the New Jerusalem and all that. So let's get a little idea here in verses uh, 12 through 14. Now, he's going to give about the wall and had a, a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at 12 gates or at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. In other words, there, there's the wall of the city. Uh, well, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the land. So you've got gates that is named after the 12 tribes of Israel, and you've got 12 foundation points for the wall that is named for the disciples or the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, <clears throat> it's just like we wonder, well, why would God put gates up? Well, the gate, the wall and the gates are representative of God's eternal security. In other words, we'll know that it will resonate forever. There will never be no change in it. Angels are at each gate. They will, are just the gatekeepers, you know, for whatever purpose it is. You know, Jesus said that we would come in and we would go out. And I've pondered about that in when you read in the Gospels, uh, why he said that. But then when you look at, you got 12 gates. Well, that means that we can go out. We can go out into uh, the countryside because there'll be trees and everything and uh, enjoy that as well. Uh, do you remember what Jesus said, told Peter? If you go back to Matthew chapter 16, we'll read that right quick like, it turn there. In verses 13 through uh, 19, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Philippi, he asked the, his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art. John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, and, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But I say unto you that I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, which means son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and that means Petra, and 
upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And, but when you go back to verse 18, you find that Peter is part of the rock. In other words, he is part of the foundation. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. The Bible plainly tells us that. That Jesus is the chief cornerstone. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 10. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And uh, each one of the apostles or the disciples uh, will have a stone there. But Jesus is the main stone. And of course, they're uh, cor uh, chief cornerstone. And also, Jesus told them that I'll give the keys, plural, of the kingdom of heaven. There's a big teaching in that if, if you know, we ever get into that because you have to know what's in heaven and how you can bind what's here and loose what's here. And so, back to uh, the verses. And, uh, uh, of course, so the wall of the city had the twelve foundations and in the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The gates were named after the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And then we get to uh, verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Now, <clears throat> the the measurements in the Bible is different. Uh, just like a cubic is supposed to be from the tip of your finger to your elbow. And if you put it on a standard scale, it would be a foot and a half or it would be 18 inches. A reed or rod is six cubits, which would be equal nine feet. And then a furlong is 200 meters or an eighth of a mile. Now, he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Verse 16, now pay close attention. The city lies four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it is equal. In other words, it is a cubicle. It is a square. Now, verse 17, he measured the wall thereof and 144 cubics according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. Now, let's hold still. So, it being four square, if you go by the furlongs, 12,000 furlongs, you'll find that depending on who is doing the teaching, you'll find two different measurements. Most go by the measurement equaling 1,380 miles. Some say it's 1,500 miles. Now, 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles and 1,500 miles high. Because they said the length and breadth and the height of it are equal. Can you imagine a building 
1,500 miles high? I looked last night as I was studying. That's why I said John had to have been on a, on a really high mountain to see everything that he was seeing. And uh, uh, the Twin Towers before 9-11, before they were toppled, were 1,368 feet, which isn't quite a mile. And the New Jerusalem is going to be 1,380 miles high. Do you know that our spy satellites aren't but 600 to 1,200 miles from Earth? They would hit, they would be hitting the New Jerusalem if they were spy satellites because they are lower than the, the top of New Jerusalem. Let me put it another way. If you was to start here at Galax and you was to travel directly west, you would go all the way to Farmington, Arizona. And if you was to go from the very bottom tip of Florida, you would end up in the middle of Lake Erie, above Michigan. And you make that a square. That covers over three-fourths of America. And it's going to be that tall. Study showed that uh, uh, if I don't, you know, we don't know how many layers, is, how many levels, how many floors, or whatever, how it's going to be, but been calculated that it only 25% of the space were used for dwelling, giving people plenty of room, 20 billion people could live spaciously. Consider right now there is just under 8 billion people on planet Earth. And everybody could live in it, and nobody would be in a tight squeeze. The walls, where it said that the walls, they're of 144 cubits. In other words, the walls is 216 foot thick or 72 yards thick. 72 yards is almost three quarters of the length of a football field. Because if you play, take from uh, goal line to goal line, that's 100 yards. And 75 would be three-fourths of the way. Now, So you can get a picture that you're just three foot short of being that three-fourths of 100 yards. Or, or, yeah, three-fourths of 100 yards by being 72 yards. That is a thick wall. And it will stand for eternity. You see, our, our feeble minds cannot picture something that massive. Because, I mean, we, we look at we go back and we look at the twin tires. We look at the, the tire that replaced them. Uh, we look at the, the highest tire, which is in Dubia. And uh, you think, wow, how massive. And them wouldn't even make one little dent in the size 
of what New Jerusalem is. So, <coughs> so imagine being 1,380 miles. That's a good two and a half day driving 10 hours a day running basically the speed limit. So it'd take you two and a half days to go from one corner to the other corner. Two and a half days to go to the other corner. Back, back. So it would take you 10 days to make a complete trip around. And can you imagine what it would be to go up each level? We don't know how many levels. Excuse me. There is. And yet, it is massive. Now, let's get into verse 18. Now, I know yesterday I went, I went way longer than I intended to, so I'm, this is actually going to go into next week, but I'm going to get some of the details that we can. In verse 18, the building of the wall of it was of jasper. The city was pure gold. Now picture this, pure gold. The best that we can do with gold is 0.999%. We can't get it pure. It's going to be pure gold up there. Like unto clear glass. Mm. Now, Jasper's is either clear or slight greenish crisp. Now that's what the walls is going to be like. Pure gold. The city inside. Okay. And then verse 19. And the foundations, plural, of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, which is going to be either your, your clear or slight greenish color. The second is going to be sapphire. Sapphire is of various shades of blue mostly a rich blue. The third, a Chalcedona, and it is a greenish blue, a gate type color. The fourth foundation, an emerald. And of course, emerald is used typically a, a deep green. The fifth, sardonyx, is red and white stone and sometimes can be sort of dullish color. But I have a feeling it's not going to be dullish color there because everything is so pure that it's so pure that you can, it's like looking through glass. The six is Sardis. It is a bright red stone. The seventh is Chrysolite, and it is a golden color. In other words, it, it'll, it'll look similar to gold itself, except it'll be more of a golden color. Uh, the a is burl, and that's a sea green. The ninth, a topaz, which is a yellow green. Uh, the tenth, a chrysophrasis, is like a green apple. The eleventh, a jacinth, that is a blue, and then the twelfth is an amethyst. 
which is a purple color. So now these foundations of the New Jerusalem are going to run from uh, anywhere from red to yellow to a slight greenish to blues uh, to a vibrant blue to a deep green to a bright red or bright white or a dull red or a dull white, a golden color, a yellowish green, an apple green, a blue, and purple. Uh, I know one of the things that uh, men hate to do is to take their wives shopping for jewelry and going into a jewelry store. Because most of them is attracted to the diamonds and everything. But, you know, as you look, you look at the sapphires and the emeralds and the rubies and all that. And uh, uh, they're different, you know. And, and some women like something besides just a diamond. And so you go into a, a jewelry store. And look at all those different types, just like we announced, the Jasper, the Sapphire, the Shilda, uh, Chalcedony, the Emerald, the Sardux, the Sardis, the Chrysolite, and the Burl, the Topaz, and the uh, Chrysoprasus, and the Jacinth, and the Amethyst. And those little rings picture in your mind, a building that is 1,500 miles in any direction, north, east, west, south, and straight up. And it's going to have all these around it. You know, the walls are I don't know, you know, it, it just boggles your mind because I don't think that I have ever seen a picture of New Jerusalem that does justice to what the Word of God tells us it's going to look like. And uh, the because the colors are so uh, vibrant and everything. And, uh, uh, and it's so massive. I mean, it is so massive. Uh, grandson, uh, he just has uh, come back from out in Arizona. He, uh, they're uh, close to Lake Havasu, and which is probably about a hundred miles farther west than where Farmington, Arizona is. And of course, by flying, it didn't take that long. But if you was to fly from, say, Charlotte or Roanoke to Phoenix, you're going to get a, dist a look at a distance of how broad the New Jerusalem is. If you was to fly from Key West, Florida to Lake Mir uh, Erie, you're going to see how far it is from south to north. And then to visualize that it's going to be made up of all these precious stones. And, and a lot of us like looking pure glass. The gold is so pure that you can see through it. Hmm. And let's get verse 21. In verse 21, the 12 gates were 12 pearls, and every several gate of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent. One gate 
And these gates aren't going to be just small, like you walk through going into somebody's yard. These gates are massive. And you ladies that have pearl necklaces, you look at your pearls, and most time you may have one that may be a, about a quarter to uh, less than half or, or three-sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And you picture a pearl that's probably going to be nine or ten foot high in diameter and everything that you could has to be open to walk through. That's hard to imagine. I remember many years ago I was listening to uh, some people they were talking about heaven and they one of them said, well, I don't believe that what John wrote in uh, New Jerusalem about the New Jerusalem, New Heaven, New Earth is real because why would God do something like that? You see, that's using an earthly mindset because it's not nothing to God. We look at money, we look at gold, we look at silver, we look at diamonds, we look at precious stones. They're valuable to us. But to God, it's just decoration. And God, Jesus said, in St. John, he said, I go and prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. And where I go, I will come back also for you. And this is God's mansion that we're going to be living in. It's not going to be a little old shack on South 40. There ain't going to be no trailer parks in heaven. There ain't going to be no cabins. There ain't going to be no shanties. There's not going to be no tents. It's massive. Mm -hmm. The street of the city was pure gold. Can you imagine walking on a street that goes probably 1,500 miles any direction you want to go? Pure gold. That's God's hard talk. <laughs> We struggle to pave highways around here. Could you imagine if every street was pure gold? What it would be like? I mean, it'd be beautiful. And that's what God has prepared for us that make it to heaven. I mean, we look everything we have. I didn't realize it till uh, many years ago that as soon as they started, just like when they built the New River Bridge on 77 across the New River uh, over their side of Poplar Camp, that as soon as they built it, they were doing, had in works to repair it. Because the wire on bridges and everything, you have to have the maintenance and the upkeep has to be planned years in advance. And, uh, and so, you know, I thought, well, they build a bridge and that'd be it for several years. But no. As soon as they, by the time they got it completed, they were done preparing to start refurbishing, redoing everything, and keeping it on top shape. It's just like our homes. They deteriorate if you do not keep them up. And even at that, they still will have breakdowns, they'll have uh, damage, 
that can be done to them. And so you constantly are having to do roof repair or, you know, having a new roof replaced, new siding put on. You have to have uh, your walks uh, uh, redone and everything. And uh, so it's a constant thing. But in heaven, we won't have to worry about that because it will last for eternity. And, we, and that's another thing we cannot comprehend because our mind is set on time limit. Because we know that rarely does anybody live past 100. 110 especially. You have some people make it to 90, some to 80, some 70, some 60, some 50. You have some that don't even make it to be born. And that's a shame. But in heaven, all those 60 plus million babies that's been aborted here in America since 1970, they're going to be there. They will be there. And they won't be little babies and running around in diapers. They will be children. And uh, it's just so amazing. Streets pure gold, not imitation, the real thing. Pearls, 12 gates that is made of pearl. One huge pearl. We haven't seen nothing. Makes me think of that old song, you ain't seen nothing yet. We've not seen nothing yet. You can watch programs on, on TV where they go to mansions and things like that and show you some of the, the finest of the finest places. And it is no comparison to what New Jerusalem is going to be. And maintenance free. Are you ready? See, that's the question. Are you ready? And if, you know, as a as man, I don't, I've got rings. I don't, I wear my wedding band. And uh, diamonds are fine, you know. Women like diamonds. And that's fine. But we're going to have a city that, <coughs> excuse me, I've been in dust this evening. But we're going to have a city that's flawless. Everything is pure. There's no flaw in the stones that make up the city. It is a special place because this is where Jesus is going to be there. Verse 22, now I'm going to close. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. In other words, right there, smack in the dab in the middle of of New Jerusalem will be our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll have access to Him for eternity. We can go in, we can go out. We can stay. Eternity. Drink from the fountain of life. Eternity. So, think about that. Just, just picture in your mind. Just close your eyes. Look up the stones to get an idea of what they look like. And then close your eyes and try and picture a building so massive you can't see the end of it. You can't see the height of it because it's so huge. 
and it's got all those it's made up of all those stones well wow. mm. don't know about you but uh, it is something to be desired why wow. it's not nothing to do about well I mean Jesus said lay up your treasures in heaven I mean what we do here will be rewarded for when we get there but God was giving John the dimensions and the material and what the new Jerusalem was is going to look like. So, I hope this witch you have time to do a little research. And it's like I said last night, is when I showed you the, my very simple diagrams. Our solar system is just a spot in the Milky Way, which is a spot in the supercluster, which is just a spot in the entire observed universe. And God's got it all in the palm of his hand. So nothing's impossible with God. So I hope Again, that this gives you a little inclination to what it's going to look like. I believe the new earth is going to have our trees and the flowers and the fields and the mountains. Because John was on a mountain when he seen the new Jerusalem coming down. Because if you're like me, I love to see the mountains. I love to be up on the peaks like on Blue Ridge Mountains riding through uh, the Bella on North Carolina side, for, side where you can look off for miles and miles. It's just beautiful. Can you imagine what it would be to, to be on the top floor or the very top of the New Jerusalem, 1,500 miles up and what it would be to look out. In my mind, we would have to have probably uh, binoculars to be able to see anything. But yet, when we get there, we'll have a glorified body and we should be able to see it without anything. We won't have to have a, a, a telescope or binoculars to see long distance will just it, it, it just blows your mind when you try to picture it. but see our God is so he's so vast that's why when we 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 are trained when we go to school or when I was and the only thing that we really were concerned about was our solar system our sun, our moon, our planets that revolve around the sun. Just like said, Mercury and Mars and, and of course, Earth and Saturn and uh, Jupiter and Pluto and Venus and all those, all those planets in our solar system isn't a drop in the bucket to what God's got all over. Where will ours come from? Where, where is God? Will it be observed? Well, we know we won't have to worry about it because this earth's going to dissolve. This whole solar system's going to melt in fervent heat because that's what Peter wrote was how it's going to be destroyed. And John said that it's going to pass away. And then God's got a new heaven and a new earth. Is it a new solar system? Possible. But there will never be no more sin. That's the great thing. So, as always, I'm going to ask you the greatest question that you never be asked. 
Is your heart right with the Lord? Have you ever been born again? Have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you hadn't, right now, right where you're at, is the best time that you'll ever have to accept Jesus. And it's very simple. Just ask him to forgive you of your sins. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that you that God will forgive you. And then ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit so that you can live for him from this day on. And if you'll do that, your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Death will have no sting. Grave will have no hold on you. You won't have to worry about hell. You've got heaven to gain. You become a new creature with a new feature and a new future. Because when you become born again, you become a child of God. You're filled with the Holy Spirit and your future is eternal life in a new heaven and a new earth with our Lord and Savior and our Father God for eternity. You can't beat that deal. And it's only through Jesus can you get that. So let's just pray together. Father God, we just come to you right now. In the precious name of Jesus, and Lord, I pray for those that are watching and listening, that, Lord God, that this will just intrigue them to open their hearts up to you, Lord God, accept you, Lord God, as their personal Savior, Lord God. Because I'll, I know, Lord, that if you can forgive me, you can forgive anyone. And, Lord, I know what it is to have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. And I thank you, Lord, for it. I pray for our nations. I pray for Israel, Lord God, for the peace for Israel. And, Lord God, that our nation would do what is right, Lord God, for the people here. To serve you and to do and be a nation under God. You, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, just use each one. Give them words that are in season. And, Lord, we thank and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, I invite you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, to come join us at Mountain Harvest Church. And if you can't make it in person, watch us live on Facebook, Pastor Randy Brewer. It'll later be posted, usually Sunday nights. I post it on or upload the video on YouTube, Mountain Harvest Church, Pastor Randy Brewer. Also, Tuesday evenings and Wednesday evenings, uh, we're finishing up the teachings on Revelation. And uh, at 6.30, you can catch us live. And it will also be uploaded onto YouTube as well. And as always, uh, thank you for your time. I hope the Word will always encourage you and stir a desire in your heart to know more about our Lord and our Savior and the things that is going around and to be faithful, to watch and pray, be ready in season and out of season so that when he comes, that he doesn't catch you and be caught left behind. So I hope that you have a very blessed rest of the week. And look forward to seeing those that can Sunday. And thank you all for watching tonight. And God bless.